Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today I'm going to teach you how to use a tracer and a sweep to create and animate a spline inside of Cinema 4D similar to your trim pods in After Effects. So without further ado, let's dig in. Right, I have this animation of a post-it flying through the air and smacking the back of a board. And what I want to do is create some kind of an animation line that will follow this post-it when it hits the board. So there's a, a cool tool in Cinema 4D called a trace object. So you go in, yeah, first of all, you click your post-it and then you go into MoGraph and you choose tracer and then post-it will now be in your tracer link. If you hadn't clicked down on the post-it first, that won't be inside there. So you can just drag your post-it into this field and it will come up. So the first thing you'll notice is when it animates in, it's tracing every single point on this uh, post-it and we don't want that. So we can click on trace vertices, uncheck it. And now it will only trace that path. Now what it's done is it's created a spline, which is awesome because you can then use a sweep object to create a physical um, shape. So if I go and I choose circle and I press T on the keyboard and scale it down a bit, then I'll use these two splines and I'll whack them inside a sweep object. So let's drag these into a sweep object. And uh, first things first, let me just um, turn my garage shading lines on. And you'll notice this is too thick, so you can press T on your keyboard and scale down your circle spline. Secondly, uh, if you have a close look, let's just turn this camera off so you can have a look. We just want to make these the, the geometry a little bit cleaner on the spline. So you can go to your circle and choose uniform, let's say put it on about five. And then you can go into your sweep, uh, not sweep, your tracer, and do the same thing. Go into the immediate points, um, put it on uniform, and also put that on five. Now we just have a nice equal spaced um, object. And let's just turn the camera back on. Now, the first thing you'll notice is when you animate this on, that it doesn't have that lovely little taper, you know, going from thick to thin, which is easy enough to resolve. You click on your sweep and down over here, there's something called your details. And all you really need to do is pull down on this end. And there we go. And same thing again, you know, if you want the end of the spine to be thicker, you could just end up making your circle thicker again and then just making this even thinner at the end. Right, so we have that flying through. Awesome. Now, like in After Effects with trim pods, you have an, an in and an out, uh, which you can animate the sweep on. So to show you how to do that, if you go back to your, uh, your sweep, you have a start growth and an end growth. So we don't want this to be on straight away because as you notice, when it first comes in, it covers the whole entire screen. So what if we had it, let's, what if we had it started about say 14th keyframe. So we go to our end growth and we drop a keyframe down there and drag it a little bit forward to maybe about 20 and drop another keyframe. Now all I need to do is go back to 14 and put the end growth to zero. And now when you animate it on, it's only gonna start there. Boom. Let's see, watch it plays in. And now what we wanna do is when it gets to the board and hits the board over there, we're gonna click on our start growth and we're gonna move a few keyframes forward and we're gonna put that to 100. So now it should animate out at the very end. 
So we have it come in, hit the board and go out. Now the next thing we'll need to do is let's create a, another white texture. And I'm going to drag that white texture onto my sweep object. Now I would like to have this fade out so that it's not a, uh, one solid white object. So I can do that. If you click on your texture and you actually tell you what, first of all, I'm going to put this on interactive render region so that you can actually see what's going on here. So I click on white and I go to alpha and I choose gradient and you'll already start to notice it's put a bit of a, a gradient fade between um, white and black over there. You can click inside this and choose UDV and now it fades from white to zero alpha. So basically when it's black, that means it's zero alpha. Now you notice this is the wrong way around. So I can right click on this and say invert gradient. And also that white is a little bit too strong there. So I can make that a little bit more gray. And I remember that the, the more gray or black it is, the more uh, your alpha transparency goes down. And I can then drag this black a little bit forward. And now you've got a nice clean fade out at the end. Now let's just give this a little test. Uh, if I go to make preview and press OK, let's just render this up and see what it looks like when it animates. So flies in and boom on. Now it's not quite smooth when it comes in over here. So we can resolve that. I can right click on my start growth. And it'd be nice if it sped off over there. And I can click back my end growth, show F curve. And over here, I would like it to shoot on nice and fast and then slowly come in. Let's see how that goes. Make preview. Let's see if it's resolved it anyway. Yeah, that's a lot smoother. Now the other thing is I could, if you look in these beginning frames, I would probably be nice if this kind of faded on. So we can also do that. If I click, go to about frame 14, you know, where my um, splines growth starts to come in, I can click on the alpha. And you also notice you can record your gradient. So I'll record one there, drop another keyframe there, and I'll go back here and let's make that gray fully black. And then make sure to record again. And the same thing for you. I can go back inside there, drop keyframe here, over here, drop another keyframe. And on that end one, I'm gonna make that fully black. So now imagine if this is fully black, that means it's 100, 0% uh, alpha and record that. Let's give that a try and see what happens next. I'm a lot happier with that. Cool, and there is how you make your own animated uh, streaks inside Cinema 4D. Thank you so much for watching, bye.